Hello and welcome to the end of February update from the Tao team. You're here with me, follow. And without further ado, let's get into your Q&A questions. So the first question is from Thaper.eth. They ask, what are the plans to boost the token, Agora's obviously, after testnet launches? Can we expect centralized exchange listings, etc.? Thank you. All right, yes. Um, so we do have some plans to uh, obviously improve the usability of the token, uh, make the project and Tau net obviously as it goes along, continue to make it easier to use, to onboard more users. Obviously we can't talk about price for legal reasons, but um, you know, you know, beyond testnet, we're going to continue to make everything uh, easier to use, more efficient and, uh, and grow the community. Cheers. And the next question is from Lynn and they ask, everyone talks to Tau and it's all combined into one big database. So where is this database stored? And what would the block size of the Tau chain be? How would you add? And like any blockchain, you can always store that on the blockchain, but it's very expensive and you need a good reason to do so. So. Um, so same for Tau, you will be able to store any data you want on the blockchain as long as you will pay uh, enough transaction fees for the people who process the, uh, the blocks. Other than that, um, the, there are uh, two ways, because after all, not everything has to be on the blockchain. So there are two ways. One is a centralized server and another one is a decentralized uh, DHT network. Uh, we will probably have uh, support for both over time. All right, fantastic. Thanks, Ahad. And the next question is from Biscuit Boy. And they ask, after mainnet release, the token will no longer be an ERC-20 token. Would the team work prior to launch or soon after on getting the token supported by one or more mainstream hardware wallets? Keeping coins elsewhere is less secure, and this will be even more relevant the more value enters the ecosystem. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, security is paramount and uh, very important to our, you know, the whole ethos of Taunet. One of the things that we're going to be doing is working very hard to establish you know, good connections with the hardware, uh, mainstream hardware wallets. And obviously as the notoriety of the project increases over time, I think that'd be a lot easier for us to do so. Um, so as the project gets more popular and so on, I think we'll probably get a lot of uh, adoption anyway, but I'm sure we'll make a lot of inroads there too. And the next question is from Swagger. And they ask, the blockchain system you are building is a layer one. Would it be possible for other projects to utilize your system to build various layer two solutions on top of it? And will you consider providing some sort of incentive to said projects? Some layer ones have a certain allocation of funds reserved for the promotion of layer twos. All right. So, of course, there's going to be a big push for us to, you know, have a lot of projects adopt Tau. Um, obviously, they're going to have to change their ecosystem to do so. Um, and, you know, in, in doing so, it's going to increase the, the popularity, the usability, the, the user base of Taunet um, and uh, the general sort of uh, approach that we take to creating software and um, how we handle blockchain. Um, now, in terms of how we do so, we're not entirely sure just yet, but we sure, well, I'm pretty sure that, you know, given the benefits of, you know, utilizing the, the features of Taunet, um, I'm, I'm pretty sure that a lot of projects will want to do so because, you know, we've uh, solved a lot of the biggest problems in software and blockchain. And the next question is from PK Nedge, and they ask, is Testnet still scheduled to be released in Q1? Okay, yeah, thank you, Fola. So this is an important question. As uh, some of you may have already seen, we've released uh, the roadmap for the uh, Tao uh, language uh, uh, release. And um, as you can imagine, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's core technology to the TauNet itself. Um, so right now the TauNet is uh, a bit delayed, the ongoing development on Tau language. Uh, but that's progressing really well, as we'll see a little bit later on in our uh, development uh, update. All right, fantastic. Thank you so much, Karim. Logic Calamity even has three questions. And the first question they ask is, there's a lot of hype and noise about Tau, which is the BitTensor project, and a lot of value attached to it. Do you think that Agora's, our project, will coexist with such projects and grow in parallel? Or do you believe that given a long enough time frame, most value will migrate to Tau solution? Um, well, I think in the early stage, they will definitely um, coexist in a fruitful way, but ultimately, um, yeah, because Tau, over Tau, you can basically do not just logic-based AI, but also machine learning. Um, theoretically, it would be possible to host in a network, including its uh, subnets, um, all on uh, 
on on Taunet. Could be that over time, um, even all the machine learning applications that we see currently hosted on other networks will migrate on Tau and therefore also enjoy all the benefits of um, the logical AI capabilities of Taunet. Absolutely. And just to add to that, it's important to just note that the machine learning cannot do uh, uh, logic-based AI and logic-based AI can do logic as well as machine learning. So we expect that um, because some of these you know, maybe features may be missing, it's probably going to be uh, some some uh, propagation over to uh, the world of Talnet. Do you think that once mainnet is running and important features have been released, it can be beneficial for Tau to allow layer two projects to build their solutions on top of it? And if so, could this be added as a future goal in the roadmap? Well, uh, I've actually just answered this question in a, in a, in a previous question. Um, so yeah, absolutely. That's something that we're going to be pushing for in a big way. Um, the more developers, the more users, uh, the more access inroads to Townet, the more information, uh, uh logically, uh, uh, formalized on Townet, the better. So, um, that's something that we're going to be pushing for in a big way for sure. Um, once mainnet is live, will you work on the integration of Agora's with a hardware wallet? This will be important for securing the tokens for long-term custody. Again, <laughs> I've answered this question in a previous uh, question earlier, and yep, that's absolutely something that we're going to be looking to do. Um, if it may, it may be the case that it's already supported, but if it's not, that's something that we definitely want to make happen as well. All right, the next question is from Ethan, and they ask: Many community members are afraid the period from now to the release of Tau Mainnet will be very long. To speed up the Mainnet release, can the Tau team release the Mainnet V1.0? which only has the most simple features as soon as possible. Then Tau team can gradually upgrade mainnet to V2, V3, adding more features. Well, this is definitely our general guideline also. Now we test net. We, we try to release earlier the expense of releasing less and indeed the testnet will be very, very minimal. And with time we will enhance testnet um, in an expectation to reach the shortest path to a mainnet, which will also be minimal. Um, and we'll extend with time. So yes, that's definitely our uh, existing state of mind. Fantastic. Thanks, Ahad. And the next question is from Kane, and they ask, do you have an update as to when you'll be moving onto your own network? Yeah, so just as we uh, heard from Ahad right now, uh, we'll be releasing all of our technology basically in uh, piecemeal. First, uh, we're planning on doing testnet. Um, and then uh, testnet itself, I think the period uh, will be crucial to um, uh, let that play out as much as possible because during that time we'll be experimenting uh, with the language and its applications and uh, making sure the, uh, talking specifically about the security, there's another question about that. And, um, and yeah, so we need to take uh, our time at the testnet level uh, to make sure that when we launch mainnet, it will be uh, completely secure and uh, the easiest to use uh, by the community. So, um, yeah, we, we can't give you any exact time frame for mainnet, uh, but only, only to say that um, all in good time. All right, fantastic. Thanks, Karim. And the next question is from Jim, and they ask, has the team explored similar relationships with Intel or AMD, like the program we've entered into with NVIDIA? Um, so we've we've really um, not done the most amount of inroads there uh, with other uh, uh, big hardware companies, such as the Intels and the NVIDIAs. Uh, we've had some conversations um, here and there, uh, but we haven't made any uh, uh, big uh, inroads just yet. Um, one big block to that from our side would be having something to really show, um, which would be uh, Tau language in that regard. Um, so once Tau language is uh, obviously we get to some uh, version we can show and tell, um, then uh, we'll be making a lot more uh, pushes to, to uh, on, on that side of things as well. The next question is from Sage and he asks, wouldn't a rebranding from Agora's currency of Tau to Agora's AI Taunet be helpful for marketing as well as for people searching for the product or project or uh, uh, trying to understand what it is? No, uh, we don't feel like we need to do that. Um, I believe that it's a, a cheap trick that will ultimately um, put us in the same category and look as, as, as uh, same as everyone else. And Tau is 
very, very different. Townnet is very, very different. Um, and uh, many of the projects out in the AI space don't AI after their names. Um, uh, I think that the, uh, the efforts of the project and what we do will be enough for people to know that, you know, we are pioneering a, uh, a, 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 a logic based AI. And, um, you know, once we, as you've seen, uh, you know, we've, we've begun to get some recognition in the space. And uh, once we get the recognition that we really deserve, um, I think once we look back on that, we won't need to, we, we'll be glad that we didn't put AI in the name because we wouldn't really have needed to. All right, cheers. The next question is from Seki. They ask, hi, I was one of the affected by Chowix Exchange who lost Agora's tokens. Sorry to hear that. I know I won't get them back, but I was wondering if the team can and has been tracking down the exchange wallet and could blacklist those tokens so they won't swap to mainnet. Yeah, absolutely. This is something that's extremely important to us. Um, we don't want to see any of the, uh, uh, you know, token holders get scammed um, by any means. You know, um, some some exchanges actually list us um, without us requiring uh, or requesting it. So, you know, crypto is a, a, a place where you have to be really, really, really careful um, and do your due diligence before you use even any exchange. Um, so, you know, that's something we're going to look into. Um, we don't want anyone swapping to mainnet, obviously, who shouldn't be. Um, and um, if I'd love to see in the community if there's any uh, more conversation about this uh, that we can... If you're happy for us to, for example, free certain uh, uh, scam wallets that we've uh, identified as scam wallets, then we would be more than happy to. But obviously, we only do this. Um, we will only make this kind of action with the communities. Uh, involvement and consent. We won't just go out and do this. So this, you know, this, these features that are available um, in the um, smart contract for us to be able to do these things, we've always said that, um, you know, it's up to you guys. It really is up to you guys. Um, and obviously we're not going to just freeze anyone's wallets. It's got to be uh, 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 situations like this, which are um, completely um, identifiable scams. So, you know, if you guys are happy to do so, uh, let us know in the comments on Telegram and, you know, keep this conversation going. Cheers. All right. The next question is from Joe Larson. Is the Q1 estimate for the testnet still a valid estimate? Or is there a new expected timeframe based on the new roadmap? Um, well, we've already answered this question in the Q&A. Um, so we'll keep that one rolling. But thank you for the question. And uh, yeah, just have a look back for your answer. Uh, and the next question is... I've seen you offer to demo your product to a few people on Twitter. Can you demo the product for your community? Absolutely. Um, a video of some of its use cases so far would be extremely interesting to see. Well, obviously we're just not there yet, but of course, um, once we are able to, we will do so. This is not going to be a case where we're demoing um, to other people and, you know, it's, you know, you guys finish and um, find out last, you know, this is a, a conversation that you guys are involved in. So, um, yeah, as soon as we can do demos, we'll be doing them. Cheers. Uh, and the next question is, what are the next steps after launch of the testnet for the team? What is required for the full testing before mainnet and the blockchain to be launched? Well, there are many things to, to give a partial list. Um, that our language will be uh, very minimal at the beginning, so we will need to add a lot of extensions. Um, and also we will need uh, a base logic, uh, a more robust base logic for the Tau language, which is going to be the two variable of element with counting. And we will also need to invest a lot in, uh, we will also need to invest a lot in performance and optimization because I, I don't believe that uh, it will be uh, fast enough at the beginning. Um, a lot of other usability features, um, uh, UI, uh, caching, uh, persistence, uh, maybe the DHT network that we spoke about before. And uh, on the blockchain side, we will use this uh, enhanced our language to make more and more parts of the of the blockchain code to be implemented uh, in the Tau language. So yeah, that's by a partial list. All right, fantastic. Thank you, Ahad. And the next question is from Sir Andrew, and he asks, making Tau more user-friendly besides auto-highlighting of self-contradictions, will there be an automatic grammar checker in Tau's controlled natural language interface to give users a list of correct grammar to choose from? 
Yeah, we will definitely uh, uh, add some some more features like uh, uh, this is spoken about uh, Sir, uh, spoken by Sir Andrew or also some code completion and similar stuff. All right, fantastic. Thanks, Tamash. And the next question is from Naveen, and they have a couple. And the first one is, how would the logical AI methods that Tao uses differ from others in creating AGI? So I understand that you refer from other logical AI methods. So I understand that we already take for given the obvious that um, AGI you can create only with logic, not with uh, machine learning. So for the difference between uh, Tau logic to other uh, computational logics, uh, there are two main differences. Uh, one difference is um, every logic is different. It's usually very rare to have two logics that one is better than the other. Usually there isn't such a thing. Usually each one of them can do less of that and can do more of another thing. Yeah, as long as we stay in the realm of decidable languages. So the decidability will always have this kind of trade-offs. Um, the Tau language also uh, has this trade-off compared to other languages. It can do things that other languages cannot do, but it cannot do some things that other languages can do. Um, I believe that um, the Tau language is um, can encode much more practical information because it can refer to uh, sentences in the logic, which is uh, a feature unique to the Tau language. And in addition to that, it can refer to a sequence of sentences over time with inputs and outputs, and by that describe processes and software. Um, so that would be point one. Point two is that the Tau language is not really a language, it is a language extension. So you can take any, uh, several languages, almost any, and extend them with the Tau extensions. The Tau language always rides on other languages. So, of course, it will always be the best because you can always take any other best language and make it even better by enhancing it with the Tau extensions. Brilliant answer, I have. Thank you very much. And the next question is, how would a network become more autonomous since Tau Nets having a rule-based system uh, isn't very dynamic? Indeed, Tau is not a rule-based system, not in the common sense of rule-based systems. Uh, Tau is based on uh, a very rich logic, uh, logical formulas, uh, which are very far from being just uh, simple rules. Um, and indeed, uh, uh, Autonomous evolution of ability of, of Tau is very, very wide. All right, brilliant. And the next question is, what are the benefits to beginner level software engineers and non-software engineers and non-technical people? Well, in its early stages, Tau language will be rather difficult to use for like non-developers and beginning like uh, beginner developers, but essentially it's designed to also support knowledge representation and over time there will be uh, uh, support for a controlled natural language interface, which basically means that anyone essentially yeah, can become a developer. And also because using Tau language lets you create correct by construction software, um, that essentially eliminates traditional testing and debugging. Uh, debugging. So that saves development teams or individual developers a lot of time and uh, yeah, resources like money. All right, fantastic. Thank you, Killian. And the next question is from Peter Dan. And they ask, when is mainnet to predicted to roll out? Yep, so we've already answered this question um, in this Q&A, in previous Q&As. Um, obviously, we have to uh, uh, let testnet play out uh, and um, uh, we're going to be adding more features to testnet uh, as time goes on as well. Um, so it will come obviously after that period of time. Cheers. And the next question is from Abdul Rahman Taha. And they have two questions. The first question is, what impact will joining the NVIDIA Inception program add to Agoras? And their second question is, between hundreds of AI projects, why did NVIDIA choose Agoras to join the NVIDIA Inception program? Um, during our process or, or, or phase of uh, looking for funding, uh, we reached out to NVIDIA. Um, uh, one of their uh, VC team 
essentially uh, 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 invited us to uh, 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 basically connected us with the Inception team and they uh, onboarded us into the uh, Inception program. And that's how essentially that came about. Um, in terms of the impact, um, we still need to be able to show uh, uh, Tao language and um, see how we can benefit their products and, um, and, and, uh, and their tools and, and see how that can relate with things that we're doing here at, uh, at Townet. So there's much work to be done there. Um, and the next question is from Umberto and they ask, where do you see Tao in 10 years time? And have you got plans for a stock exchange listing sometime in the future? You know, in, from my side of things, I would guess I had can answer this as well. I see mass adoption of the methodologies that we use in creating software, um, in having com conversations, communication, um, what that will look like. It's a very, 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 uh, challenging thing to predict in the future. <laughs> um, but, uh, I, I, I will see a massive efficiency gain in the way that, uh, we communicate and collaborate. Uh, create software um, and have self-governance over uh, the software that we use and um, create. And in terms of a stock exchange listing, um, we currently don't have any plans to do a stock exchange listing, but you know, things may change. Cheers. All right. The next question is from Dana and he asks, what is a normalizer and what is a splitter? I'm trying to understand what these concepts mean in the lexicon of Tao. Uh, generally, a normalizer is something that um, puts a formula in, in some minimal form in a way that uh, that we can actually work with and solve. Uh, splitter is my terminology. It's not terminology that used anywhere. It's uh, something that uh, can be seen as something that uh, takes uh, two sentences, one a special case of the other, and finds a third sentence that is strictly in the middle. It says strictly less than one and strictly more than the other. Um, these concepts uh, are, of course, uh, very hard to understand now because there is no material out there, but um, uh, shortly after the patents will, will be submitted um, and uh, with the uh, uh, permission of our patent lawyer, I will publish a document that uh, I've been writing, which uh, uh, for now it's about uh, 75 pages, and uh, but that's only a draft, so I will organize it and maybe remove parts that the patent lawyer will ask me to remove. Um, but uh, yes, after the patents uh, uh, will be submitted, I will publish this document and uh, everything uh, will be clear, at least to the mathematically literate audience. Amazing. Thank you so much, Ahad. And the next question is from Dana. And they ask, what are the kinds of apps which can be described by Tao language? I understand that there is a limit to expressiveness versus decidability. I don't know the exact complexity class the Tao language supports or what it will mean for developers. Yes, yeah, so, so there is a characterization in terms of complexity because the Tao language is complete for certain uh, complexity classes and because it is complete and it can do everything in that complexity class. Um, now, there, there are two ways to look at it. One is the base Tao language and the other with uh, certain extensions of certain kind of higher order functions. With higher order functions, the complexity class is, uh, it is complete for the complexity class elementary and uh, without them, the base Tao language is complete for uh, a somehow weird complexity class, which is somewhere between X time and X space. Uh, precisely, it is the complexity class of, ev of uh, everything alternating during machines can do in, in exponential time and linearly many alternations. All right, fantastic. Thank you so much, Ahad. And Donna's next question is, what are the next steps for the project after mainnet? From my side of things, um, it's going to be focused on community growth, developer growth, expansion and reach of the project. Um, a lot of uh, 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 not just growth through our, 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 um, the methods that we currently use, but really um, teaching people how to use Townnet. Um, and that will be um, over lots of different methods that we were going to be rolling out, obviously uh after after mainnet and even before then um a lot of these initiatives um will be really to try and get uh, as many people on board as possible um from you know even at the level of going to schools and um helping uh, people to use um townnet we want people to uh, be really familiar with um the methodology of uh of of town 
All right, the next question is from KG. And they ask, can you do a whiteboard video about Tao? You can use a video of Charles Hoskinson explaining Cardano as a reference. I listened to I had explaining Townet, but since it is not whiteboard, it was hard to understand and follow. Um, well, firstly, I'll be very interested to see uh, or understand which elements uh, of Townet you found challenging to understand. Um, obviously, the videos of I had <laughs> are very old at this point, um, and the website should clarify or um, make it a lot easier to digest um, on the uh, decentralized uh, tab on the website. So if you go to Townit on the website under the decentralized header, um, that should answer many of the questions there. But if there's something there that you didn't uh, understand, then let us know on, the, on Telegram, on uh, Twitter, Reddit, and um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get to it there. And the next question is from Jan. How is the network security insured? Could this design choice be changed for the sake of security improvement if we had consensus about it? Okay, yeah, so that's a good question. Uh, Taunet um, has the same security concerns as any other uh, blockchain. Uh, however, because of its nature of being user controlled, uh, we believe that that's uh, potentially another plane of attack. And I personally believe that uh, all new uh, rule submissions that users uh, would suggest uh, would have to go through the regular uh, proof of stake um, mechanism. Uh, that way, for example, if uh, a malicious uh, attacker would want to say so, uh, propose a rule that could be uh, harmful to the network, uh, they will be uh, penalized for it. Um, so that way, uh, basically, everybody has a responsibility to make sure that the new rules they, they provide will not be harmful uh, to the network. That's the one novel uh, security aspect of uh, Tau. Plus, of course, um, yeah, I mean, uh, if uh, vulnerabilities come up, uh, users uh, will be free and maybe even rewarded for uh, suggesting new rules that will enhance the network security. All right, fantastic. Thank you, Karim. And the next question is from Jan, and they ask, can other blockchain and DAOs benefit from Tau and its utility, for example, to build secure applications or improve governance? Uh, yes, definitely. I mean, Tau is the perfect tool for any collaborative software project, in particular for large scale software projects where many people with different kinds of expertise are involved in, because ultimately everyone will be able to describe how the software shall be like, and Tau will be able to detect the agreement between all parties involved, and the calculated agreement all, will already act as the executable specification or software. And uh, yeah, this is also the only efficient way to achieve two, uh, true decentralized governance, which is aspired by blockchains and DAOs. So if you look at all related projects today, they all rely on mostly centralized development teams. But with Tao, they will be given an opportunity to finally live up to their claims. Fantastic. Great answer. And the next question is from David Andel. And they ask, is Townet going to start out as a clean slate or will it come preloaded with some common knowledge like psych? So ultimately, um, Townet will initially have a certain set of rules that it adheres to, but its knowledge base is, I mean, Townet, we have the claim to for it to be completely decentralized. So ultimately, it will start with no knowledge at all and its users collectively will input their knowledge and opinions and ideas into Townet and Townet will evolve based on that knowledge. All right, fantastic. And the next question is from Jeff and Jeff asks, if Tau language alpha is 91% complete, how close is testnet to completion? All right, thank you uh, for the question. I think we addressed it uh, a bit earlier in, in uh, today's uh, uh, video. Um, however, let me iterate that uh, basically testnet is highly dependent on the Tau language itself, which is uh, still under development. It's kind of our critical path. Um, even though Taunet, um, you know, we've made uh, uh, quite a bit of progress on Taunet, but uh, right now we're waiting for the integration between Taunet and uh, Tau language. And uh, it's, it's difficult to give uh, an exact time frame uh, right now, but please uh, keep your eyes on the uh, progress that we give on the um, 
on the roadmap and that should uh, keep you up to date. All right, fantastic. Thanks, Karim. And the next question is from Valentin and they ask, in the white paper you write, a contradictory opinion is always false. Now, let's say Alice's opinion is that vanilla ice cream is the best and Bob's opinion is that chocolate ice cream is the best. This would not necessarily be false, but am I misunderstanding something here? Yeah, this is not a contradictory opinion. Those are two contradictory opinions, which is fine. That, that's perfectly fine to have contradictory opinions. A single contradictory opinion would be if Ali says, um, uh, vanilla ice cream is the best and vanilla ice cream is not the best. That's a contradictory opinion. All right, fantastic. Thank you so much, Ahad. The next question and last question is from David Andel. And he asks, how is Tau supposed to deal with the block size growth? Each block is supposed to contain the code itself, but what about the knowledge people put into it? I can't imagine all that being saved in each block. That would be far too much data. David, thank you so much. Uh, I had already answered this question in earlier in the Q and A. So uh, that about wraps it up for your Q and A questions for February. Thank you so much for your questions. We'll see you on Twitter. We'll see you on Telegram and we'll see you on Reddit. Cheers.